Blog Talk Radio. Avoid listening to their hearts. Associate money with success. Sacrifice today for the sake of tomorrow. And I would add, number nine, that there's the eight ways their uh, school is making children somewhat stupid and depressed is that they're teaching them that a college degree is the way to success. So uh, that's where we have a problem today. One of the problems is that our educational system has failed us, and um, we are still struggling in especially the melanin communities. So uh, today we're going to hear, I hope, from our guest who's trying to call in. But okay, four six nine. Hold on, I think I see him. Uh, yes. Four six nine. Can you four hear six us? nine. Yes. I can hear you now. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome. Okay. Is this Bishop Netanyahu? I'm here. All praises to the Most High. How are you, sister? All oh, praises. I was looking for the number that you were texting me on, or someone was texting me on, but I got it. We hallelujah, hallelujah. How are you this morning? <laughs> All praises. So well, so well, so well. Thank you. And yourself? Yes, I'm on. I'm on my phone, and sometimes my phone drops. So uh, Naima oh. is is my backup. Uh, she's in the studio. I'm gonna actually. I'm gonna open up her phone just in case. I think Naima, are you there? I've opened up three one two eight four nine. She might be on mute, but um, uh, Naima's yeah, here. Naima. Thank yeah, you, so, Naima's uh, my welcome. Good morning, Naima. Thank you uh, once okay. again. My phone acting strange, but we'll go through it and uh, pray that all is well. But um, in case I my voice goes silent, then you'll know my phone has dropped, and then Naima will usually pick up from there. But the uh, brother Nathaniel, Bishop Nathaniel, uh, I am so uh, am so grateful that you are here to share uh, about your new school and also about your journey to become uh, Bishop Nathaniel because most of us uh, grew up in traditional Christian homes and uh, like myself, I know from our brief conversation. Uh, we started uh, seeking knowledge uh, about something other than what our parents taught us. So, uh, Bishop Netanyahu, why don't you go ahead and uh, share a little bit about your background and um, how you came to actually start schools. How many schools have you started so far to date? Uh, We have about uh, 25, 25 schools. 25? Uh, From America and uh, Africa and the Caribbean combined, about 25. Wow, I'm, I'm be... impressed. And um, are they all Israel united uh, in Christ? Uh, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am, they are. Yes. Okay. So uh, go ahead and, and, and share with uh We have quite a few callers on the line. And if you will just share with uh, our listeners, a little bit about your background, maybe where you were born, and and some a little bit about your parents, and then um, just move right into today. Okay, okay. Well, uh, as you know, I'm Bishop Nathaniel Israel. Um, I'm a Southern boy. Uh, brought up every summer in uh, Holly Springs, North Carolina. Um, was raised in the uh, Christian church. Um, a friend of mine named um, Pete. Uh, he hit some reality to me around 1987 when he he got so disgusted with me uh, glorifying Christianity. Because he asked me, he said, well, what color is Jesus? I said, white. He said, what color is Peter and Paul? I said, white. And he was like, he said, so he he hit me with the N-word. He said, you dumb N. He (laughs) He said, don't you know anything about yourself, your own people? So, you know, and from there, you know, it really got me thinking. So he began to, uh, give me many books about uh, um, Kemet. And because I was, I, I was embarrassed, number one, so I began to uh, study and research about where melanated people come from. Um, it kept, I kept going back to the Bible for some reason. It was always there. Uh, so 87, uh, the 87 to about 
89, I was following, I, I had my, my godmother, uh, Mo, Tasha and Morset. they was always taking me uh, into, um, like, Dr. Ben Yahakana. I would uh, listen to lectures by him. Uh, then after that, I started to follow um, uh, Minister Louis Farrakhan. That was around 89 uh, with Farrakhan. I started to listen to him. I read... Um, uh, the book, what was the name of that book? Message to the Black Man. Um, but the, uh, there was something in there that, that troubled my spirit about the two-head, Yaakov, the two-head science. So that really irked me a little bit. I couldn't wrap my mind around that. So I said, well, and I noticed he always quoted um, from the Bible in his, in his writing. So I would always go back. I said, everything is leading me back to the Bible, leading me back to the Bible. So around um, 1990, uh, another friend of mine gave me a flyer, and I saw a, a black man with white hair on it, and it said, uh, we're not supposed to celebrate Christmas. I said, hey, what is this? I said, what, what is this about? So he says, oh, you know, we're the Israelites. Uh, so I say, show, show me, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? So he began to show me the scriptures about Christ being black, the Apostle Paul being black, Moses being black, and I, w I was blown away. Uh, King Solomon being black. I was shocked. And I said, listen, you've got to take me to the school. I'm going. I need to go. So um, my wife came with me. She wasn't my wife at the time, but, you know, the girl I was seeing, she came with me. She's my wife today. But uh, So this was in 1990. And from there, I, I've really been stuck ever since in, in, entrenched in the, the scriptural understanding of the Bible and how it's more than just a history book. It's a book of prophecy as well. And I, I yeah. learned that that the Bible is the history of the black man and black woman. Uh, and it was really shocking to me. Everything I questioned and wanted to know, I found in the writings of the Holy Bible. And this explained to me why many of the great black leaders throughout, you know, America, uh, even South Africa, Ghana, they, many of them often quoted from the Bible, Malcolm X, Farrakhan, Martin Luther King, Marcus Garvey, many of them, Denmark Vesey, Nat Turner, many of them got their inspiration always from the Holy Scriptures. Very rarely did I hear them quote from other books. It was always the Bible, chapter this, you know, book this, chapter that, verse here. I'm like, oh, shoot. And so ever since then, I've, I've been stuck ever since, and uh, the Lord has saw fit to raise me up, you know, in this understanding to help guide our people to um, a better understanding of who they are and what we must do in America, why we were brought here as a people. So that's it in a nutshell. <laughs> well, that that's my journey similar to, you know, just meeting people. It's interesting how you started out, how you met this person and that person and you saw this. And, and I think we all, we both, and, and those who can relate, uh, can say this was a divine assignment for us to grow in our overstanding of the Bible, number one, which I look at as mostly metaphors, but uh, my grandfather was a pastor, so I spent my my infant life, I mean, a truly infant life, my mother took me to my grandfather's church when I was a baby, and so I heard the word, I heard the word ever since I was a, a baby, and then my parents sent us to a Methodist church when we were in Chicago, a Methodist church on 46 and Ellis. I grew up in that Methodist church uh, listening to, I think it was a white pastor, but the word, the word, the word, the word kept ringing in our ears. And so even as a child, I'm sure you can relate that, even as a child you were in the church hearing the word and, and at some point you really start paying attention and then you drift away did you drift away from the church for a while um that your mother uh, yeah your well after after pete uh johnson hit me with the n-word and told me i was a, a, a disgrace to the black race it, i really dropped the bible i cut it off for like at about three to four years i stopped reading it but everything mm -hmm. kept bringing me back to it it kept bringing me back yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, no coincidence, right? No coincidence. Right. You, you exactly. feel that divine exactly. hand yeah. on your life, that you were meant to study this book. And, and then we grow uh, in the meaning of the, the black letters on the pages because 
uh, isn't that what it's all about is that those black letters are not just physical elements but they're spiritual have you have you reached that conclusion uh yes i was the, the scripture says in romans 7 that the 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 law of god is spiritual and that took me to you know levels of understanding where there's always a cause and effect if we choose or choose not to do what is written in the book there will be a side effect that's why it says the word of god is spiritual the law of god is spiritual in romans 7:12 Right. So you now you have schools all over the earth. That's and you have a school in Ghana. Uh yes, yes. Uh, we are currently at the cultural center, the Kumasi Cultural Center, every Sabbath. Uh, the, the young men and women there, they're they're learning, but they um and we're trying to set something up like an internet cafe because the internet is very choppy in certain areas. So uh, right now we've we've mailed them. Um, um, DVDs and things of that nature, and it's, the people come and watch the DVDs on a a large screen every Sabbath. All praises. So it just once again points out how global our family is. That <clears throat> yes, we have. Yes, <laughs> I would like to plan to go to uh, India because there's a remnant of our people taken there as slaves called the Siddis. S i d d i s. Uh, they speak the Indian dialect. They worship the Indian god. They and for all. Purpose, they really believe that they are Indian. Uh, but research has shown, no, these were people during the transatlantic slave trade brought to India as slaves, you know. Black men, when you see them on, like, if you go, go, go to YouTube and check it, see these, they look like you and me. <laughs> oh, sure, you know? sure. And yeah. uh, the more you study, uh, the more, you know, I don't have a television, I don't have cable, I just have Internet. So I look at YouTube, I choose my news, and I watch uh, videos on YouTube. But uh, I have found that uh, just leaving out the TV, your mind just opens up to all sorts of knowledge and wisdom and uh, information. And uh, we get so much knowledge just reading the Bible in Psalms and Proverbs. There's new information there if you're if you're open to that. So uh, right. you now you started these schools. When did you start your first school? Uh, the first school started in 2003 for me. Mm-hmm. Okay. 2003. Okay. So we're relatively young. Yeah, but it just kept growing with the help of, I'm sure, your family. And uh, did you have your your blood family helping you with these schools, or you found new family members outside? I of had blood to find family? new. My my own, my my blood family they uh, love the white Jesus Christ with no biblical reference. They love Christmas, Thanksgiving, Fourth of July, none of which can be substantiated in the biblical text. And I have some of them are ministers. And one minister, a uh, cousin of mine, he said, "I know all that you showed me in the Bible is true, but if I teach it, I will lose my money. My my congregants will leave me." And that is always the fear of the Christian church, that money. <laughs> that's you know. true. That's true. Uh, so that's where we have to uh, wake up from that and uh, realize that uh, there's truth not being told at the pulpit. Uh, I'm going to take a, a, a commercial break and um, we'll be right back and we're going to talk more about these schools and what you're and we are back with uh, Bishop Nathaniel. Uh, I'm a pleasure to have you in the Female Solutions Studio, and uh, we want to talk about all one of these schools. I'm, I'm excited about the, the what type of curriculum you have you have at these schools because it's so important. As our, I play a, a audio every at the beginning of the show um, from Sadhguru, an Indian man who talked about health within and the need for our education system to introduce programs on how we can be healthy. So what is what is that healthy curriculum that you have? Uh give us some uh some idea what what where the students can be taught when they join your school. Well we have a um uh in a New York school we have two sections. We have the um adult we have two classes for the adults, uh a noon class and an evening class. Then for the children, we have also an uh, early morning class and an afternoon class. And the sisters g- deal with the children's class. 
um, and they share with the children, you know, the history of who we are before the transatlantic slave trade, before the sub-Sahara slave trade as chronicled in the Holy Scriptures. Uh, they verify the teachings with, uh, we have recently come across some maps, some old maps during the 1700s, where it shows that Negro land was also called the Kingdom of Judah. Uh, there was a map um, uh, put together in 1743 as well as 1747. So the children are learning that history. They are learning um, morality. Um, and that's something that's often not taught as well as civility in terms of dealing with your brother, your sister, your neighbor. Um, and we, also, we, we, have, we tend to uh, avoid such topics in terms of morality. We concentrate right. on, um, I'm talking about the generic schools, of uh, uh, white, a whitewashed history followed by mathematics and the English uh, language, uh, as well as some science. However, what we always decline to teach the children is sense of morality, which is God has many laws, moral laws, as well as civil laws. Uh, if we begin to teach this to our children, our young men and women particularly, there would be no, this will eliminate black-on-black -black crime. This will eliminate rap, rappers referring to our sisters as bees and hoes. You know what I'm saying. Um, so these things must be taught. But the, the adults must show forth the proper uh, understanding, get forth that, that example to the youth. Because you can teach something, but if your example does not bring it forth, the children will not cling to it, you know. <laughs> no. No, so that's absolutely. a little nutshell right now. Now, do you um, promote any type of diet? Are you vegetarian, or are you? what is your belief about that? Well, when you read, if, if we can read, uh, I think, Masharaf, you still on, on the phone with me? Yes, sir. Can you read Genesis 129 for me, please? Yes, sir. This is the book of Genesis, chapter 1 and verse 29. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree, in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed. To you it shall be for me. So, in the Bible, the Most High, in the beginning, from the time of uh, Adam, which was a black man, by the way, um, he gave the dietary law of herbs, uh, vegetation, things of that nature. It wasn't until Genesis chapter 9 where the Lord introduced meat into our diet. Okay, if we can get that in Genesis chapter 9, I just want to show you something real quickly because many of the listeners may or may not be familiar with it. Uh, Genesis chapter 9, uh, let me see, mm, around verse... Uh, can you read verse 12 for me? Let me hear that. This is the book of Genesis, chapter 9 and verse 12. And God said, This is the token of the covenant which I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for perpetual generations. Okay, now this is when Noah and his sons got off of the ark. And when you read further down in the chapter, in the next chapter, he goes into meat. Okay, but now, but the Lord does tell us how much to eat uh, concerning meat. If I can get that real quick, in Sirach 31 and 16, okay? In the Apocrypha, which was a book removed from the Holy Scriptures uh, in the 1700s by the uh, Protestant Church. Get that for me? The book of Sirach, chapter 31 and verse 16. Eat as it, as it becometh a man those things which are set before thee, and devour not, lest thou be hated. So it says devour not, meaning don't be a glutton. Go ahead. <laughs> Verse 17, leave off first for manner's sake, and be not unsatiable, lest thou offend. Right. So if you're unsatiable upon anything, you shall offend people. So this is teaching us etiquette. Go ahead. Verse 18, when thou sittest among many, reach not thine hand out first of all. Uh-huh. A very little is sufficient for a man well nurtured. And yeah, so the Lord is teaching us to eat very small portions, okay? That's also not taught, uh, especially like when we went, when we did, we were examining the eating habits from Ghana, 
to America. American, the American eating habits are uh, exuberant. We eat a lot of food, uh, and our plates, are, they look like three-tier wedding cake plates, for example. When the Bible says, a very little for a man well nurtured. Read that part again. Verse 19, a very little is sufficient for a man well nurtured, and he fetcheth not his wind short upon his bed. Right, going into gas. If you overeat, you will get gas. Bad case of it. Go ahead. Verse 20, sound sleep cometh of moderate eating. See, that sound sleep, meaning a good sleep comes of moderate eating. Go ahead. He riseth early, and his wits are with him. But the, but the pain of watching and collar and pangs of the belly are with an unsatiable man. Uh-huh. Was that it? Uh, this is verse 21. If thou Come down, go to uh, 37 and 29, please. The book of chapter Sir- 37, verse 29. Go ahead. The book of Sirach, chapter 37 and verse 29. Be not unsatiable in any dainty thing, nor too greedy upon meats. Nor too greedy upon meats. So meat was okay, the Lord was revealing, but not a lot of it. Okay, go ahead. Verse 30. For excess of meats bringeth sickness, and surfeiting will turn into collar. Exactly. So it will turn into sickness. So now what I wanted earlier, sister, was it was Genesis 9 and 3, actually, where the Lord said, every moving thing that liveth shall be meat for you. He was referring to the, uh, the dietary law of the clean meats. It says, every moving thing that liveth shall be meat for you, even as the green herb have I given you all things. That was Genesis 9, verse 3. That's when he inst- introduced meat to our diet. And not a lot of meat, as we just read in Sirach, but a small portion, very little. So that's how the Lord gave us foods to eat. I met many sisters who say he had, they have a problem losing weight, and they're vegetarians. And I, and I explained to them, well, you have a problem losing weight being a vegetarian. I said, for example, not to be insulting, I said, cows pretty much are vegetarians. I said, but look at their size. They eat an enormous amount of uh, you know, herbs and vegetables. I said, sister, you have to eat smaller. You heard what I said, sister? Yeah, yeah. Hello? Yes. Yeah, <laughs> so with all of us, we've got to eat moderately in moderation. We tend to eat a lot, a lot, a lot, and that will increase our size, especially amongst uh, some men and some sisters. Yeah, that that's true because uh, I have a friend who's a vegetarian. She has hard time losing weight, um, and uh, it's because partly because of a thyroid condition. Um, it's it's multifaceted. Sometimes why people can't lose weight, their metabolism is off uh, for various reasons. Uh, if they're taking medication, I I was married to a man who uh, not only did he have problems losing weight, even after being on Nutrisystem and some other diet plan. Uh, but he gained weight after Nutrisystem, and uh, he has uh, he's been on medications. Uh, they've increased his medication, and I read an article recently that if you are on any medication, it could be one of the reasons you're not losing weight because that's one of the side effects is a, a weight gain. So you're right. right. Uh, you have to look at it. But I agree totally with you. Moderation is a problem uh, in in our country. We really don't right. know how to eat what we what we should be eating, and so I'm I'm glad that uh, that's being taught in your schools. Uh, we have to start yes. from square one. If mommy and daddy didn't teach that, then now we can go to school, the Hebrew school, and and learn uh, how to eat moderately. Uh, so um, now. Um, you um you have a curriculum. Do you have use the same curriculum in every school, pretty much? Uh, yes, we do. Um, we do. I also wanted to make mention. I uh, several sisters I know. Um, they often many of our people off. We make excuses. What I mean by that is this. <laughs> this is what I'm about to say. In Wisdom of Solomon, chapter six, verse seventeen. Master, you to read that for me. Wisdom of Solomon 6.17. Listen to this very clearly what it says. This is Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 6 and verse 17. For the very true beginning of her is the desire of discipline, and the care of discipline is love. So 
what many black men and black women lack in terms of eating and any other thing is discipline. I have a right. sister, she always says, oh, my thyroid, I have a thyroid. Now, some people do have a thyroid, but I'm talking about my family. I hear thyroid. And my mama said, well, you ain't got no thyroid problem. You just like to eat, girl. What is wrong with you? So <laughs> we often hear this, many of these things. Like, uh, for example, there's another scripture I was reading in Sirach 32.17. If you could read that for me. We lack discipline. Watch this. Watch what it says, Sirach 32.17. The book of Sirach, chapter 32, and verse 17. A sinful man will not be reproved, but findeth an excuse according to his will. We will find an excuse for anything, you know. Um, several brothers amongst us are um, personal trainers pers- for, for sisters, personal trainers. You know, they, they work out the, uh, the diet for them to eat, and they have a problem with that. A lot of them, I can't do, I can't change my eating habits like that. It's not right. It's not good. And then they say, okay, as a result, I have, now I have a thyroid problem. Yeah, okay. <laughs> not to be insulting in case anyone does le- legitimately have a thyroid problem. You understand what I'm saying, sister, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, my friend, in this case, she had actually had thyroid cancer in her uh, about 20 years ago, and they gave her radiation, and so they always given her some type of thyroid medication now. And I think it's more the medication, the side effect of that, that she, why she has problems losing weight. But you're right, some people are just making excuses when discipline is throughout the scriptures uh, promoted, uh, Psalms and Proverbs. I read that all every day. It's like discipline is life. So if you're undisciplined exactly, exactly. in your lifestyle, then uh, you're going you're gonna to have all sorts of problems. You're right. Mm-hmm. Um, so That's right. Totally Absolutely right with that. Now, how much Hebrew do you teach? Because I notice you, you're using the word Lord instead of the name of the creator. Is, do you teach any Hebrew in your schools? Uh, only we, we, the class does know the Lord's Hebrew name, but we don't push it because there's various Hebrew dialects, like you have the Sephardic Hebrew, you have the Ashkenazi Hebrew, uh, you got the German uh, pronunciated Yiddish, uh, and then you have the uh, Lashwan Kodash. And when we meet various brothers and sisters, there's always a conflict in what form of Hebrew do you speak. And it, it tends in the black community, it leads to arguments and hate. So in order for, like, read it, watch this, Isaiah 28 and 11. I just want you, the listeners to understand, because why, why would I use the word Lord or, or God? Watch this, Isaiah 28 11. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 28 and verse 11. For with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people. Right. So in English, everyone knows the term Lord and God who I'm making reference to. There have been many cases where I use the term Yahweh or Elohim. People be like, who, who, what are you saying? What is that? And then I have to go back and give a, a, a brief history lesson, a Hebrew course, you know. And, it's, 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 and according to Scripture, the Lord is teaching us that he would reveal his understanding to us in the languages of our captivity. So the language that I learned the Bible in is English, you know. I can't read Hebrew 100%, you know. Like many of the Hebrew... Uh, teachers amongst our community. Very few of them can read and teach Hebrew fluently. It's not too many of them that can do that, you know. So that's why. Okay, interesting, um, uh, because on my journey, um, I was in a Hebrew Israelite group, and then I was in a Messianic group, and then uh, I was in a group for a long time, almost 10 years, uh, where we focused on the name, Yahuwah. And um, mm-hmm. I, I learned not only the name, but uh, how 7,000 times that name was taken out of the scripture. So it just impressed upon me as a as a servant of the Most High that, oh, my goodness, why would they do that? Why would they take the name of the creator out of the Bible 7,000 times? Because, you know, the Jewish, the the European Jewish philosophy or belief is that you, it's too sacred, the, the name shouldn't be spoken uh, it, it can only be spoken on Yom Kippur, and so you learn, you travel with this this teaching and these people all the time. And then I learned uh, that the letters, not just the name and 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 the language, were important, but the letters themselves 
represent our DNA. Um, have you gotten into the the letter, the Hebrew letters at all, and the meaning of those letters? That's that's been part yes, of my important part. You're referring to, you're referring to the ahead. Aleph and the Beth and the Gimel and the Dalet. Absolutely. Those Hebrew letters and their meanings. Yes. 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 I'm very familiar with it. Um, if I can, like you, you pronounced the, the creator's name is you said Yahweh. What did you say? I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh, that's right. That's how I'm pre- And then we I went from Yahweh to Yahuwah. <laughs> right. So the school I came from, we we pronounced his name Yahweh. Uh, I visited mm-hmm. another school, and they say Yuhe Wavhe. And when we came right. together, it always led to arguments. And I'm mm-hmm. like, this doesn't. Why are we fighting about whose pronunciation is? Correct. This right. is why, if we can read Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 8 and 9, what I found amongst our people, the black community I'm making reference to, is that we tend to argue and fight over things that will be cleared up in time. Watch this. This is the book of Zephaniah chapter 3 and verse 8. Therefore wait ye upon me, saith the Lord, until the day that I rise up to the prey. For my determination is to gather the nations that I may assemble the kingdoms to pour upon them mine indignation, even all my fierce anger, for all the earth shall be devoured with the fire of my jealousy. For then will I turn to the people a pure language, that they may all call upon the name of the Lord to serve him to serve him with one consent. So the prophecy is that when the Lord smites the nations with his fiery indignation, he will return to us the pure language that we may all call on him with one consent. We're going to speak the same language. We're going to say his name the same way. So prophetically, if that is what's going to happen, why should I fight with my brother and sister because I say Yahweh and you say Yahweh and the next one says Yuhei Wabhei? Let's stop the fighting. Let's come together as Israel and keep the commandments. Because it was because of breaking the commandments that we as a people went into slavery and remain this day. Yes, I, I agree. And um, there are communities that uh, agree on how to pronounce the name, and, and that's where I was. We had huge, uh, you know, over 100 people. We all pronounced the name the same way. So that prophecy is already, I think, being fulfilled, that people are learning the pure language. But in some areas or communities, they're not there yet. You're still arguing and fighting. But I, I understand what you're saying. Don't argue and fight about it. Just let's call him the creator. Let's call him the most high. Let's move beyond the fighting, and if you don't, if we can't agree on how to pronounce Yodhevave, Yodhevave is just the letters; it's not the name. But Yodhevave right. are the four letters of the Tetragrammaton. Those names have power; they they represent uh, something very powerful. And so I I totally get that. No no division. We don't need any more division. We got enough division in the secular world and with Europeans now. I wanted to ask you: Have you have you do you teach at all about um, how Europeans came to be? I, I met a brother in my journey uh, who taught about the albino that the Africans gave birth to. Have you heard that 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 teaching at all? How Africans who are the uh, original uh, natives in the land and all over all over the earth gave birth to albinos, and that's where the Cauc- and they stayed in the Caucasus Mountains. And that's where the Caucasian race started. Well, that's taken from the Hebrew scriptures in um, Genesis. But I want to open up with uh, Galatians 4.26, and I'll show you where people are gleaning that from. Let's start with Galatians 4.26. Okay. Go ahead. The book of Galatians, chapter 4 and verse 26. But Jerusalem, which is above, is free which is the mother of us all. So when it says Jerusalem, which is above, it means above all nations, uh, which is the mother of us all, that's where Adam and Eve were created at. That was the original area where they were formed. Now, many times you will hear people talk about the albinos coming from the Africans. However, when you read Genesis, let's go to Genesis 2 and 7. Let me show you where it comes from. Genesis 2 and 7. The book of Genesis, chapter 2 and verse 7. 
And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. So this proves that the first man, Adam, was a black man, okay? The woman that came from him was a black woman because the dust of the ground is different shades of brown. The darker you dig, the darker it gets. Now, where comes the white man? From where? Because if the first man and woman was black, where did this white man come from? Go to Genesis 25. Let's start at 21 and read down. This is the book of Genesis, chapter 25 and verse 21. And Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife because she was barren. And the Lord was entreated of him, and Rebekah, his wife, conceived. And the children struggled together within her. And she said, If it be so, why am I thus? And so this black woman, Rebekah, asked the Lord, If you bless me with a child, why am I have a problem in my childbirth? Go ahead. And she went to inquire of the Lord. And the Lord said unto her, Two nations are in thy womb, and two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels. Mm -hmm. And the one people shall be stronger than the other people. Mm -hmm. And the elder shall serve the younger. Read. And when her days to be delivered were fulfilled, behold, there were twins in her womb. Now we know they're not identical because he said two manner of people shall be separated. So they were what's called fraternal. Go ahead. And the first mm -hmm. came out red all over like in hairy garment. So the one we call white man, the Bible calls him red. Why? Because the blood shows through his skin. Due to a lack of melanin, pig brown pigmentation. Go ahead. And they called his name Esau. And after that came his brother out. And his hand took hold on Esau's heel. And his name was called Jacob. And so I this, this was Jacob and Esau's birth. Jacob became the father of the Israelites. Esau became the father of all the Caucasians, okay? That's where they gleaned about the, uh, the albinos coming from African people and all that. It came from the biblical text. So in the Bible, the white man's uh, genealogy stems from Esau. He is the biblical Edomites, also called Idumeans. They became the Greco-Roman Empire in the Bible, okay? That's who they are. That's who they be. Uh, today you may call them Americans, American whites, Germans, French, Russian, Caucasians. These are all Edomites according to the scriptures. That's their biblical God-given name. Okay. Okay, so you're saying the Caucasians are the Edomites. Yes, that's what God is saying. They are the Edomites. <laughs> and there's, hey, there's more scripture. We can, we can prove it further. <laughs> No, no, that, that that sounds that sounds reasonable. Uh, it just makes it even, um, you know, more more. Uh, how do I say? They are our brothers, basically, uh, our lost uh, brothers. Yes, or, they how, are how our wicked decide, brothers how would you that God that? is going to judge. <laughs> the Lord again? is going to judge all the evils. Yes. Okay. Yes. Oh, now you asked also. You made mention of um, the. The Jewish people, I mean the Khazars and things of that nature, right? No, you, yes, you know, I may have mentioned that yesterday, but I haven't mentioned it today. That's where I was going next. Oh, I'm, the, I'm, the, I'm, the, I'm hearing things. <laughs> yeah, you're hearing, you're reading my mind because that's really important. To me, uh, I believe so strongly in uh, karma and reaping and sowing. And I, you know, I always ask, well, what happened with the Holocaust and what, what happened there? Oh, wow. When you read about the Khazars, that, to me, explains the Holocaust. What do you think about Tell mm. us about what you know about the Khazars. Okay, the Khazars. Now, remember, the Khazars came, of course, Khazaria, which is in Georgia, Russia. Okay? Right. Um, if we can go to the book of Obadiah, I'm going to show you about the Khazars who come from the area of Georgia, Russia. Watch this. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Come on. Uh, you got do you it? want me to open Obadiah? Uh, no, uh, Master Rossi, come on, man. Yes, what uh, verse do you want, Bishop? Uh, let's start at verse 1. This is Obadiah, verse 1. The wisdom of Obadiah, thus saith the Lord God concerning Edom. We have heard a rumor from the Lord, and an, an, an ambassador is sent among the heathen. Arise ye, and let us rise up against her in battle. 
So this is a prophecy of what's going to happen to the nation of Edom. I'm going to get to Kazan in a second. Go ahead. Verse 2. Behold, I have made thee small among the heathen. Thou art greatly despised. So the nation of Edom, the white race, is greatly despised. Go ahead. The pride of thine heart hath deceived thee, thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rock. That's the part I wanted to get to. You see that part, thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rocks? When you Mm -hmm. read in Genesis, Esau dwelt in Mount Seir. But during the time of the Middle Ages, they dwelt in the Caucasus Mountains of Georgia, Russia. Those were the Khazars, okay? They always loved to dwell in high places, okay? Mm -hmm. Read that part again, thou that dwellest. The pride of thine heart hath deceived thee, thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rock. Whose habitation is high That saith in his heart Who shall bring me down to the ground So the nation of Edom Esau would say who can bring me down to the ground Meaning who can conquer us They're so prideful why Because they have power on their side Nuclear power Go ahead. Verse 4 Though thou exalt thyself as the eagle and Though, though thou, thou exalt thyself as the eagle Examine this What was the symbol of ancient Greece The eagle What was the symbol of ancient Rome the eagle. What was the symbol of ancient Spain? The eagle. What is the symbol of the United States of America? The eagle. Go ahead. Though thou exalt thyself as the eagle, and though thou set thy nest among the stars. Now, who set their nest among the stars and said the eagle has landed? America did that in 1969. Remember that? They landed on yep. the moon and said the eagle has landed. Okay, read that part again. Mm -hmm. Though thou exalt thyself as the eagle, and though thou set thy nest among the stars, thence will I bring thee down, saith the Lord. So the history of Edom, God is prophetically speaking, that number one, they would dwell in the cliffs of the the rocks. Okay, that's hence the Caucasians, the Caucasus Mountains of Georgia, Russia. We call them the Khazars. They call themselves the Khazars during the Middle Ages. In the Bible, they were called the Edomites, okay? Today, we call them Americans, we call them Jewish, we call them uh, Germans, Russians, Italians, but they are the biblical Edomites. Now, in the Bible, the Khazars, remember, they were called the Edomites. How Mm -hmm. did they set themselves up as the Israelites, as the children of Israel, okay? Watch this, watch this. Get Ezekiel 35. Let me show you how this. Ezekiel 35, I believe it is, and verse 5. You know what I want, right? This is the book of Ezekiel, chapter 35, and verse 5. And verse 5. Because thou hast had a perpetual hatred, and hast shed the blood of the children of Israel by the force of the sword in the time of their calamity, in the time that their iniquity had an end, Therefore, as I live, saith the Lord God, I will prepare thee unto blood. And so the Lord is going to judge Edom. Now go to chapter 36, verse 5. That's what I wanted. This is the book of Ezekiel, chapter 36, and verse 5. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, Surely in the fire of my jealousy have I spoken against the residue of the heathen, and against all Idumia. See that word, Idumia? That word, Idumia, is Greek for Edom. E-D-O-M, which means red people. Go ahead. Which have appointed my land into their possession. With so the white man in Israel, they, have appo- they are Idumians or Edomites. They have appointed God's land into their possession. Go ahead. With the joy of all their heart, with despiteful minds to cast it out for a prey. So the Bible is telling you that there is a great conspiracy. The Caucasians, who are the biblical Edomites or Khazars, they took the land of Israel, and they set themselves up as Jewish people. That's why that suffix, I-S-H, means pertaining to. Not the original, but they pertain to the Jews. That's what they're saying. They're letting everyone know uh, they're converts. And, yeah, hold that, hold but, that thought. This is, this is a very important part of history that people don't understand or realize, and I, I just realized that, few months ago going on YouTube, I'm like, wow, wow, wow. It it really explains what's going on in Israel. Hold on. We're going to take a break, 
and we're going to come back and continue this lesson. This is so important to understand what's going on in Israel because we got people in this country supporting Israel when maybe we shouldn't be doing that. And we are back, and I want to just say if you're listening online, um, you can't ask a question. So if you would like to comment or ask a question, dial 515 605 and you can ask uh, our guest a question. And those of you who are in the studio, if you have a question, press 1. If you want to make a comment, press 1, and I'll open up your mic. Uh, if you just joined us, we are talking with Bishop Netanyahu of the Israel United in Christ organization. Uh, they have a website, israelunite.org. And um, Brother Netanyahu has opened up uh, a total of some 25 schools all over the land, and in, in not just the United States, but in uh, Africa as well. And as I read earlier in the beginning of the show, uh, there was an interesting tweet about eight ways schools are making children stupid and depressed is a reality, especially in the black community. So we have a very important solution here that we're listening to, and that is to get back uh, to teaching the foundation of the word for one, and to bring out truth like our uh, bishop will bring out uh, in, in this next hour about the uh, Jewish community. This is something that we've all been very deceived about, and it's so important. And he's bringing out the scriptures um, to support this. So I, I want us to really all pay attention. I do have a caller uh, who would like to comment or ask a question. So let me go ahead and open up the mic of 312671. Your mic is open. Uh, welcome, and please give us your name, where you're calling from. We are in your shalom. We don't die. We multiply. Black power forever. And assalamu alaikum, beloved family. Uh, good morning. How you are all doing? Good morning. Good morning, Minister. This is Minister Plump. You have Minister, a question, or Minister Robert Argument? Floyd Plump. Yes, uh, I just wanted to uh, reflect on the fact that uh, the so-called American Negro uh, to the bishop. Uh, would you identify that uh, that is, or we are, which I am a so-called American Negro, are, are the children of Israel? Yes, sir. One hundred percent. Yes. Yes, sir. Oh, well, you are on point. Uh, you you are on point with that. I appreciate you, Bishop. I do want to uh, get the information again. I would like for you to repeat uh, the website. I will be going to your website uh, hopefully today, but sometime very uh, and much in the near future, because uh, you are correct and exact. And also, I'd just like to uh, add uh, something. I just went to uh, to to uh, hear the Honorable Minister Farrakhan in, in Detroit, which was uh, this past Sunday. And he said uh, one of the major parts of his lecture was, have no fear for the future. The future is ours. And he also made a statement the same as yours that the so-called American Negro, when he say the future is ours, was talking about Israel, which we are the chosen children and people of God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 100%. All praises. <laughs> that's, that's, that's a fact. Well, we, we are, you know, are you in Chicago, Bishop? Uh, I have a school in right. Chicago. We just had a grand opening two weeks ago. But right now, I'm in Tallahassee, Florida. I just did a lecture at uh, FAMU University. Yes, sir. Well, that's great. Uh, give me that website again, and I would like to uh, perhaps work with you and the community. Uh, I'm a community uh, activist and also a, uh, a, a PR person, you know, in the community. Okay. Yes, sir. Website where is we call www. The good Okay. Yes, sir. It's www.israelunite.org. O-R-G. www.israelunite. Unite. Unite. Uh-huh. Dot O-R-G. Yes, sir. Okay. Dot All praises. Good. O-R-G. 
Okay, well, we appreciate you for that uh, information and being, uh, as they say, right on time. And that's a blessing for us. And and just, as they say, uh, keep up in the word of God because the word is the Lord and the Lord uh, is is righteous. And that's what we are by nature as a people, even though we've had a lot of uh, violence going on here in Chicago we want you to pray for us. And then uh, I want to encourage you, if you can, go to the HellWashingtonFoundation.com for more information. And you can get directly in touch with me through the HellWashingtonFoundation.com. And uh, my telephone number is 312-671-2773. We're getting ready for Mayor Hell Washington's birthday here in Chicago, and that's going to be on April the 15th, which is a Saturday, uh, and and that's going to be uh, also uh, done at the Washington Park Field House. That's where we're going to be meeting. I'd like to see if you can uh, make it, if you can come by, and uh, we're going to be promoting peace, love, and unity in the community and identifying uh, with uh, the whole world in terms of uh, asking and praying, and we're going there for prayer uh, in honor of the Honorable Mayor here Washington in Chicago, and hopefully you might be one of my special guests, and we'll be okay, sharing okay. success I'll, we'll with success. Oh, praise I definitely will reach out to you, okay? Yes, sir. Well, Thank be, you so much. That would be a, a beautiful blessing, an honor, and a privilege, and we're going to be in touch with you as well as... Uh, in touch with the uh, United Nations because this this here uh, war uh, that uh, the opposition or the enemies or, or, or in fact the devil have uh, perpetrated on us as a, as a people it must end and I I see that you have you have that all in the Word of God so God bless your heart and we love you and keep up the good work and I'm a, I'm a Thank stale you. student. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much a student for the Lord And you are the best student that you can be And, and when you okay. discover yourself in, in your own history And happy Black History Month too uh, Bishop Thank you so much <laughs> Alright, Shalom Shalom, thank you uh, Minister Pump um, So uh, Bishop Netanyahu um, Give us a little lesson on the Khazar. That that's, that to me is one of the most important uh, pieces of history that we have missed, and I hope that's being taught in your schools because we've been deceived about that land over there, who it really belongs to, and it's uh, just a very interesting history. Uh, enlighten us about that, if you will. Yes, ma'am. Um, when we go to the book of Joel, see, the, the, book of, the Bible gives all the answers, and that's why I always make reference to it. Uh, Officer Marath, Michelle, Thurow, go to Joel 3, uh, start at verse 1. I'm going to read 1 to 4. Watch this. This is the book, book of Joel, chapter 3, and verse 1. For behold, in those days and in that time, when I shall bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem, I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat and will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage Israel whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. You see that? So real Israel, true Israel, was scattered amongst the nations. How? Mm -hmm. During the transatlantic slave trade, the sub-Saharan slave trade. Then it says, and parted my land. Who has parted God's land? It's parted between the Khazars, or the biblical Edomites, and the Palestinians. That's the fighting going on today. Remember, these writings were written... Over 2,000 years ago But it it has recently Came to par in our days and age Like for example The white man who took over Israel They took it over around the year 1948 When they established Israel as a state Okay The Palestinians were there a little prior to that From the time of the Crusades Okay So there's always been that fighting And they're fighting to this day And they want uh, President Trump to make a decision Whose land is it? It's neither of their lands. It's our land. Mm -hmm. Watch what it says. Watch what God says. Read verse 3. And they have cast lots for my people, 
Meaning they bid for us. They bid for us in slavery. Go ahead, auction slave blocks. Read. And have given a boy for an harlot. When the Bible says they gave the boy Israelites for harlots, they made us breeders. On all slave plantations, they had breeding farms. Go ahead. And sold a girl for wine. And everyone knows they sold the young black girls for wine, musket guns, and wine. That's what the Bible has prophesied, right? That they might drink. That they might party, commit adultery with our sisters. Read. Yea, and what have ye to do with me, O Tyree and Zidon? Go ahead. And all the coasts of Palestine. Palestine, that's the Palestinians. Read. Will ye render me a recompense? And if ye recompense me, swiftly and speedily will I return your recompense Upon your own head Watch this Because ye have taken my silver and my gold And have carried into your temples My goodly pleasant things When they conquered us during the transatlantic slave trade During those times From the time of the 1400s From the time actually before that When they were conquering the Moors From the beginning of the Renaissance They robbed all our riches from us Read Verse 6 The children also of Judah and the children of Jerusalem have ye sold unto the Grecians. So now God gives our biblical identity. The children of Judah and Jerusalem have you sold to the Grecians. The Grecians is the white man, the Greeks. They sold Judah and Jerusalem to the white man. What are we reading? The Bible. This is one of the only, this is the best history book for our people. It tells us our identity. It tells us we went into slavery, and it tells us why we went into slavery for breaking God's commandments. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> so the the Khazars now uh, are the Jewish community, uh, and I, I I saw a recent um, video or, or on YouTube about the Rothschilds, how they actually are the Jewish family that created uh, Israel, uh, the land of Israel, or or stole the land of Israel. And now we have the, that family controlling uh, so many other areas of our economy and, and society. Um, so um, now we have, we, when we bring it down to right into the ghetto, into the, the community, what do you think the most important thing that um, our communities need to know and do to come out of this uh, oppressiveness and this disobedience? Really, that's what it amounts to. How, how, where do you start? Where do, where do you begin? Well, we, we have to begin with the scriptures. Watch this. Go to Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse 1. Then jump to 7. Let me show you something. Because uh, I'm going to talk about education for a second. Watch this, though. The Read book, that. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse 1. Now these are the commandments, the statutes, and the judgments which the Lord your God commanded to teach you, that ye might do them in the land whither ye go to possess it. So these are the commandments. Watch this. Jump down to verse 7. Verse 7. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. So we're to teach God's commandments diligently unto our children. Go ahead. And shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house. When you sit in your house, God commands us to talk of his commandments. Go ahead. And when thou walkest by the way. And when we walk by the way, like down the streets. Go ahead. And when thou liest down. And we're about to go to sleep. Talk with the com of the commandments to your children. Go ahead. And when thou risest up. And when you wake up, talk of the commandments. Go ahead. And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thy That was hand. it. So now, what I wanted you to see, sister, is that the Most High wanted us to teach our children the commandments. Okay? First and foremost. That is the foundation of our learning that we have omitted. We've been teaching reading, writing, arithmetic, which is fine and good. We need that. But we have omitted the weightier matters, which is the most high laws. And it was because of breaking these laws that we went into captivity. Watch this about education. Now I want to talk about the educational system just for a second. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 48 this is one of the curses that came upon our people for disobedience. Watch this. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, and verse 48. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee, in hunger, and in thirst, and in nakedness, and in want of all things. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. 
Now, you see that? This is one of the curses. People say, oh, the Bible is a white man's book. No, it's not. Stop saying that. The Bible says the children of Israel would have yokes of iron on their neck. That didn't happen to the so-called white man that calls himself Jewish. That happened to our people. We had yokes of iron on our neck. And when you read verse 68, it talks about the slave ships. That happened to us, not the so-called white man. But I want your listeners to pay close attention where it says we would serve our enemies in hunger, in thirst, in nakedness, and in want of all things. You see that part, in want of all things, we have to go to our enemies. Guess what that includes? Education. Many of us are, 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 are marginalized to go to our enemies to teach us fundamental things such as reading, writing, arithmetic, history, science. And these are run by middle-aged white women that hate our guts. These teachers are the same ones, they are the children of the ones during the civil rights era who hated our guts, spit in our face, didn't want us to be around them. Now they're grown up, they fill our school systems, they fill our police force. Okay, that's who runs it all, the children of the ones who hate our guts. So if they never loved us, you think they're going to teach, they didn't treat us right, do you think they're going to teach us right? No. This is why with all the unions, the black rallies and all of that, they still teach the lie, Christopher Columbus discovered America. There's not one black congressman who has done anything to stand against that lie at all. They still teach the lie about the Indian soul, Manhattan for are glass beads. They still teach that lie in school to our children. So we are forced now to set up our own schools. And what's happening now, they're creating, the white man's creating a curriculum. They're going to try and make it illegal to do that. They're trying to lock people up for homeschooling. There was an article I read on Dr. Boyce Watkins the other day about a young lady, woman, who was arrested and her children taken from her for homeschooling her children. Okay. Right. These, and this was in Florida, by the way. These are the things yeah. that happen. This is a curse upon us for being disobedient to God's laws. Okay. Now, rem- watch this. Remember that bottom part of verse 48? Read the bottom part again. And he? And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. We, the yokes of iron came off our neck, sister, when we were totally destroyed as a people, meaning destroyed mentally. That's when we were emancipated. They, though Abraham Lincoln and them said, these people will fight for us. They will stand for us. They take the yokes off them now. They are totally broken. You know, like you've got that dog you try to train for years, and you've got the collar on his neck? There comes a time when you break his spirit, you can take the collar off. Now he will stand by your side. He will fight for you. He'll eat your food. He'll sleep in your bed. Why? Because you have made him yours, mind, body, and soul. This is what America, has, and not just America, Europe, and the entire institution of slavery has done to us. We are a broken people. The only solution is God's commandments. We must return to that as the Israelites, okay? You heard that, sis? Yes, yes. I can hear you. And, and, and so in the... In the- in the where, where let me ask you, where is your school located, and is it like open enrollment, or how do people uh, inquire about the school? Do they have to go to the website? How does that work? Uh, when you go to the website, I have a link called Contact Us. Just search for your city. I may have one in your city, um, and you'll find it there. Okay. So, like we have one in Chicago that just opened up, Tallahassee, Florida, Miami, Florida. New York City, so forth and so on. But you have to, the addresses are there on our website for your city. Now, are they, okay. are they set up like home schools? Are you in a building? Um, how how oh, are you? We're in a building, yes. Schools? We're in we're in a building. Right now we're only open, uh, the New York one I'm making reference to. Uh, some of the schools are open uh, five times a week, but the New York one, that's what I'm speaking of, that's open up three times a week only. And the mothers do the homeschooling right now. We're trying to create a national curriculum where all the states are uh, in agreement. The white man is in agreement and won't lock us up, you know, in terms of having a, a basic curriculum that will allow them to take their little silly exams past them. And we can also teach them true history in academia and also prepare them for the world to come. Okay. 
Okay, so you did you start? You just opened your school in Chicago. How many students do you have, and and do you have how many teachers? What's the situation in uh, Chicago? We have, we have. Let me think. We have four teachers. Now, this, when I say students, I'm, I'm also including adults because the adults come also. Okay, uh, but the children. It, there's about let me see, twenty children in the Chicago school right now. Since I was there, there was 20. Uh, the adults, there's about 90, 90 adults, and they come to learn as well, okay? Now, we're definitely trying to, as you know and I know, everything in this system requires money and know-how. So uh, this is why we always often ask for uh, donations to help us. Uh, we also are trying to, uh, but there's so much we're trying to do, sister, and uh, many of the hindrances. We're not as fortunate to have uh, Muammar Gaddafi. You, as you know, he uh, donated over $8 million to the Nation of Islam. Well, we, we, hey, we need some love like that, too, for Israel. <laughs> <laughs> we need some love like that. <laughs> right, right. So that we can do the things necessary for our people, okay? But right now, numbers is our power. And uh, each one give one, and we can we can do it. We can do it. So I'm not fearing. Okay. Now, um, there, I, was, I keep thinking about a brother. Uh, are you familiar with Ben Ami? Um, he moved a group of Chicago residents to uh, Israel, and they set up a community there. And I'm wondering if you're familiar with them and, and if there's anything from that group, because they've been there for, oh, my goodness, probably 40, 50 years in that community and um they seem to be doing okay. I was in Israel uh in um the early let's see, it was early nineties, uh and we were walking down te- in, on, down a street in Tel Aviv and uh, I ran into two Hebrew Israel we ran into two Hebrew Israelites and they told us about their community and, and I was just surprised that they were even in Israel but uh, it was my first uh, introduction um, to the community over in Israel. So are you familiar with Ben Ami and his community? Yeah, oh, he, yes. He's I, I met Actually, Ben Ami. Can. Yes, I met Ben Ami back in, I believe, let me think, around 1997. Around there I met him in Chicago uh, during a big Israelite convention. Um, I, do, I commend him for uh, moving to this Demona, Israel. That's where they're at. Uh, right, it's, right. It's a desert. But what they found out, just like we are under the curses and, and many of us unfortunately have to depend on the white man for basic necessities, ben found that out too in Israel. Uh, they required such things as dental care, medical care, things that they did not have. So they had to depend on the Israeli government to help them in those areas. This, again, this goes back to, to the curses that the Bible says, like we read Deuteronomy 28. If we can read verse 43, I have to prove what I'm saying so people will not think that I'm speaking just off the top of my head. Read that for me. Mm-hmm. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, and verse 43. The stranger that is within thee shall get up above thee very high, and thou shalt come down very low. Come on. Verse 44. He shall lend to thee. And thou shalt not lend to him. He, sh- he shall be the head, and thou shalt be the tail. So, whereas at one time we were the greatest nation on earth because we broke the Most High's laws, he said the strange nations will get above you very high. These nations will have to lend to us, and we will not be able to lend to them. So, this is what Ben Ami also he left America during the Civil Rights era, and he established Demona Israel, which was good. All praises. But he also found that that curse even followed there. He had to depend on his enemy, the so-called white man that claims to be a Jew, for basic necessities such as Medicare and dental works. Okay. Now, many of your listeners may know, uh, you've heard of the Aetna Health Insurance Company, right? Right. And Bank of America. Those two institutions got their beginning off the transatlantic slave trade. Many of these insurance companies, many of these banks like J.P. Morgan, uh, Chase, uh, Citibank, they got their foundation from the transatlantic slave trade. And then they'll tell you and me, oh, you've got to work hard, you know, go to school, get yourself in debt, and then you can make it like we did. No, you didn't get your wealth off of going to school. 
You've got your wealth of rape, robbery, murder, and slavery of the children of Israel. That's how you got your wealth. But they won't tell you that, and the school system sure won't tell you that either. <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely. Let me take a, my last break here, and then I want to come back and talk about how we can uh, build up our knowledge, wisdom, and education about health care needs like this. And we are back. We are in the uh, Israelite church this morning. Uh, with Bishop Netanyahu, uh, full of uh, wisdom and knowledge and understanding about what we need to do to improve our situation. We have, we have a major solution today. We talk about the problems all the time, but today we have a major solution, and, and uh, that's to get back to the Word and teach the wisdom that is in the Word, as well as the history and the prophecy in the Word. And um, this last half hour, I'd like to kind of focus on what we can do to teach our people how to take better care of themselves and uh, prevent what you talked about, Bishop, uh, happened in Israel where they had to depend on the Israel system of medicine. And one of the scriptures that I want to throw out there is um, Revelation 18.23. Uh, Christians love to avoid this scripture because it talks about how the nations were deceived by pharmacia or witchcraft. And uh, I was in Chicago uh, last week, and a relative of mine was diagnosed with um, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. And um, she didn't want to take my advice. I, I suggested her not to get into the chemo and all that, but she did. And this is a woman who's a strong Christian. She's got more Bibles in her house and more books about the Bible in her house, and yet she chose to uh, let the medical system put a port in her chest and, and inject chemicals and, and poisons in the way of chemotherapy to treat what is really a, a, a treatable disease when you change the way you live. So, Bishop Nathan, yeah, we got a lot of Christians who are trusting the medical system. And that one reason, like you said, you mentioned Edna. When Edna comes on the scene, um, they don't pro- they don't support or provide uh, uh, benefits for non um, traditional medical procedures. So uh, many Christians are caught up in the uh, insurance um, picture, and they believe that's the only way they can treat their body. So how do we overcome the pharmacia connection and the deception that the nations are under? Okay. Well, when we go to uh, uh, give me uh, Corinthians chapter six, uh, officer, about uh, um, come out from among them. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, chapter six yeah. and verse seventeen. Yes. Yeah, that's that. Read that. Okay. This is the book of Second Corinthians, chapter six and verse seventeen. Wherefore come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord. And touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. So we have to truly try and make it a valiant attempt to separate from white society, meaning assimilation, to separate from being assimilated, because we have truly been assimilated into modern-day America. We are nothing more than Negro Europeans. That's what the vast majority of us are. We trust their white God. We trust their 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 pharmacies and things of that nature. And I was just explaining to my wife that many of these new medications, if you watch the, the ads, they have side effects that will cause you suicidal thoughts. Uh, they will cause you bleeding of the eyes and ears, things of that nature. And we really, and when you look at it, watch this. Watch what I'm about to say. Give me Zephaniah 2 and 1. Watch what the Most High says to us. Watch the book, this. The book of Zephaniah chapter 2 and verse 1. Gather yourselves together, yea, gather together, O nation not desired. We are the nation not desired. Nobody loves us. Everyone wants to use us, but nobody loves us. But, sister, we have, like you, you yourself and many others, I've come across many people who understand herbs and things of that nature. But you know what? We're all divided. We're all separated because of our ideologies, our political groups, whatever it is. We never want to come back to what thus saith the Most High. That and he is the only one that can unite us as one. Um, we must do that. When we read Psalms 104, verse 14, if we can read that in brief, Psalms 104, verse 14, about the herbs, because you made mention of it, and we need to stop using many of the, these pharmaceuticals, because some of, a lot of them have 
disastrous side effects. Watch this. This is the book of Psalm, chapter 104, verse 14. He causes the grass to grow for the cattle and herb for the service of man. You see that? He gave herbs for the service of man. We don't want that, though. We have, many of us have lost the understanding of herbs. There's a very small group that still have retained it. I believe you yourself may be one, and there's some others. Prophet, are you there? I'm here. Okay, I was going to say. I'm sorry, Pat. I don't um, know what happened. <laughs> that's okay. Listen, I'm just grateful everything's working fairly well on Blog Talk. You never know what's going to happen. So I wanted to just say real quick that um, uh, Standing Rock to, was a, a wonderful example of how a people uh, decided that prayer was the answer. Prayer and more prayer and then just standing, standing, standing. So now, uh, because of all the arrests that are being made up and the situation where the government has said, we're going to build this pipeline anyway because they got political connections and all that, we have to wait for divine intervention now. And, and Naima, I think just you saying what you just said, we are setting the divine intention, the intention that we need to come out of these systems and, uh, and develop our own program, our own social capital, and then we have to keep continue to pray and, and watch for divine intervention. What are your thoughts, Bishop? Uh, Naima has presented the the uh, problem or challenge that we have to develop the finances and and the systems of that keep us independent. Uh, yes, that's that's excellent. I, I want to read this in Acts chapter four. Uh, the apostles came up with the same solution, but watch what they did in conjunction with understanding and keeping God's commandments as Israelites. Watch what else they did in Acts chapter 4, verse 34. Can we read that? This is the book of Acts chapter 4, verse 34. Neither was there any among them that lacked, for as many as were possessors of lands or houses sold them and brought the prices of the things that were sold and laid them down at the apostles' feet. And distribution was made unto every man according as he had need. So you see what our people did with their excess of wealth? Not only did we gather together keeping God's laws, but we were men and women of action. We gathered our resources together, and distribution was made to everyone according as they had need. We have never done this. We have, as a people, we always have a, want an economic solution for self-gain. We never come up with an economic plan to, to benefit us collectively, as the apostles did. That's what they did. No church follows this example. No religious group follows this example. But we must begin to do it. Only then can we benefit and rise up until the, the, the return of the divine intervention of Messiah. Okay, but until then, we have resources, as little as they may be. If each of us just has a dollar, we can come together. But the problem I notice with us economically is that, let's say I get together with a brother and sister in a business. Let's say the brother is covetous. He's a thief. The sister is also, let's say she's a gold digger. Our business will never succeed. You know why? Because we're not practicing the basic principles of God's laws of Thou shalt not covet. Thou shalt not steal. These basic moral and civil things, this we have to, that's why I always start off with the Bible. We have to do that. Then everything else will fall in line. Many times, like I, I had a, a brief meeting outside with some black, the new Black Panther Party, uh, and one of their members wanted us to come together with them. I said, and do what? He said, well, we can come together and fight this system. I said, how so? He said, with guns. I said, brother, stop. We cannot, I said, when you run out of bullets, who are you going to get the bullets from? <laughs> you got to go to the man you're fighting against. I said, and if they decide to drop a nuclear bomb, what you going to do then? I said, hell, if they decide to cut the water off in New York City, what you going to do? I said, that is not the way. The way is keeping God's commandments collectively as Israel and gathering our resources together. That's how we will benefit one the other. Yes, yeah, so let me open. We have a caller uh, who's pressed one three one two eight two three. Your mic is open. Uh, give us your name, please. Where you're calling from? Um, my name is Rashida Ali, and I'm calling from Edwardsville, Illinois. 
I, I, I just want to tell you. Yeah, I'm enjoying your show. I mean, the God consciousness is the approach, of, uh, in my opinion, for healing. And I'm really enjoying your show. But I wanted to ask you, I grew up on, on the west side of Chicago, and we lived in 3800 on, uh, West. And Model Collins, he lived in the back of us. I wanted to know when did her daughter pass on? I didn't know anything about it because I've been out of the community for a long time. Oh, dear. Um, well, Marva Collins passed in, um, I think it was 2012. I'm not sure. No, but, you know, you can her daughter. Her daughter. You, yeah. I, I thought you said her daughter hung herself or something. Yes, yes. We but what I'm saying, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to trace back the timeline because her, her Marva passed about four five years after her daughter. That's why I'm trying to figure out. If you go back oh. and, and if you Google if you Google Marva Collins it might it'll i I'm sure it under Wikipedia or something, they might give you a full detail of the dates. But I, I'm gonna have Patrick on this show in two weeks. He's coming on March tenth okay. to share okay. about his, his what he's doing and I'm sure we're gonna get into his family dynamics because that's so powerful what happened with his family trying to build an empire, an educational empire. I just I was just shocked to hear that, how all that happened. And it all ties in with health and wellness. So if you have a family that is not emotionally intelligent on how to deal with their uh, depressions and their disappointments and, and, and they're not getting into the word, then these things, that's what happened. You trust in the pharmaceutical industry or the doctors to, to help you to get back from your depression and your, your disappointment, and that's what happened. So did you have a question my, for the bishop? My, my aunt, my aunt she, um, she raised me, and Mom Collins lived in, in on Adams. We lived on Jackson's, and she's an herbalist. In fact, she's on the poster for February. Uh, she's a, uh, was a den mother here. And she knew Model Collins. She and Model Collins were friends when we were growing up. And she's an herbalist, and she's very spiritual and prayerful. And she taught me, you know, not to depend. She makes her own medicine. In fact, um, Dr. Phil, he came up with one of her medicines and patent um, Simple, Epsom salt and green alcohol heals arthritis, you rub your alcohol on you, and a lot of other things. So your approach, I love it, sister, because it helps to not only heal us morally and spiritually, this program does, but it also helps us to be conscious of our intake of, of, of the European medications that's killing us or having us to kill ourselves. So I really, okay. I, I, I really appreciate it, and I, I feel good about it. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Rashida. Thank you for calling in. Bishop, we only have about uh, 30 seconds. I'd like to give you the last word to uh, sum up how we can, you know, be more independent, whatever. What's on your mind? Last 30 seconds. You've got it. Okay. Um, please visit my website, www.israelunite.org. We must return to keeping God's commandments collectively, gather our resources together, Work is one. We have to be focused and disciplined as a people. We got to learn to renew our minds. We got to renew. We got to begin to meditate upon God's laws. Many of our problems are caused by uh, people we associate with. We need to change our our circle of friends. Just like we need to change yeah. the medications we use. We need to begin to pray more and fast more. That be, be, ushers in a, a form of discipline for mind, body, and soul. Fasting. Many of us are lacking in that area. We got to bring back that spirit of joy and applying of God's commandments as Israelites. Hallelujah, hallelujah. <laughs> yes, wow, that was excellent. Thank you so much, Bishop. I hope we meet someday soon. I will see you. Shalom, this I'm Elder Nathaniel, Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected 
to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets out. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, please make sure you subscribe to this Join IUIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom.